They say podcasts are going to replace books. I don't know about that. But I do think TRS clips will assist your learning process. Parallelly, what was happening in America and Russia, they were economically growing rapidly, both. And I think there was this whole arms race that was going on. Hmm. There was a scientific exploration race in some ways. What was happening there? So there were multiple technological races happening. The Americans were the first to detonate a nuclear weapon and they used it in war in 1945. The Soviets then started pursuing the technology and the Soviets were the second nation, I believe, to uh, test a nuclear weapon. And what also happened was Operation Paperclip. So uh, I have mentioned this in the past that the Germans were the pioneers of missile technology, cruise missiles and ballistic missiles too. At the end of the World War II, when the Germans surrendered, the Americans were able to acquire physically most the, the cream of the German scientists who were involved in these programs. People like Werner von Braun, etc., who were all moved physically to the US and various uh, missiles, actual missiles were also moved to the US. Mm. So the American space program has a German origin. The entire space program was built by German scientists in what is called Operation Paperclip. So the, so the V2 missile was tested from the US and then it was improved and further new um, rocket designs were created from that. The Soviets also acquired what was left of the German uh, scientific manpower and that was taken to the USSR and that's how the Russian, the Soviet uh, rocket program, space program began. So they had the R2 rocket and other, other rockets that they iteratively improved upon and then the Soviets transferred that te technology to China. So the Chinese rocket program also began as an offshoot of the Russian or of the German rocket program. Mm. So the US space program, the Russia, the USSR space program and the Chinese space program all were born in Germany. It was all German technology that was then further improved upon. Mm. So there was a space race, there was a nuclear race. Even the Chinese then in the 1960s, I believe, tested their own nuclear weapons. So there was an arms race, which is the nuclear weapons race. There was a space race about who would first uh, put satellites in the sky. The Soviets won that race with Sputnik. They were also the first to put a human being in space, Yuri Gagarin. The first woman in space, Valentina Tereshkova. In the beginning, the Soviets were at the forefront of the space race. The Americans were catching up. But eventually, by the 1960s, late 1960s, the Americans overtook the Russians. They were the first to put human beings on the moon and they thus far have been the only nation to do that. So there are multiple things going on here. You know, with the Cold War, I get the geopolitical angles where you basically economically colonize another nation and become richer. But what's the logic of dominating space? Is it kind of like a my dick is bigger than your dick thing? Like, is it an ego thing? Is it, um, is there geopolitics involved? Well, there are multiple layers to this as well. Let's say that a US president is able to overtake the USSR in terms of the space race. That guy is going to get re-elected. There's national pride involved. But when the Sputnik satellite went into space, the Americans were frightened because then you could have nuclear weapons coming in from space. Mm. Nukes in space, raining down on you from space. So they had to do something about that. So they also had to put up their own satellites in space. Mm. Then as uh, rockets got better, they wanted to also keep up with the USSR in building more powerful rockets in order, in, in case it's needed somewhere, right? I mean, rockets like uh, the Saturn rocket, etc. Uh, et it's a dual use technology. The better rockets you have, the better missiles you have, ballistic mm. missiles, ICBMs, intercontinental ball ballistic missiles. Then you have rockets or missiles you can launch from submarines from under the sea. That takes a lot of research. So both nations were pursuing these different angles. Space has a very clear military dimension. The space race is actually about keeping up in a, from a military perspective. If the Soviets could colonize the moon, the US would be left behind. There was a very big fear about that happening. So that's why there was the moon race going on mm -hmm. and the Americans won that. So it was always the fear that the other side will overtake us, a miniaturization of weapons so that you can put them inside on top of a nuclear, on top of a ballistic missile, for instance. Wow. Wait, what, like, what, what is this? <laughs> very <laughs> so, fascinating. So typically when you make a nuclear, the first nuclear weapons that were made by the Americans, so massive, massive things. If you see the photographs of fat boy and little, little, little man, little boy, fat man, whatever, whatever it's called, the two, the nuclear, uh, the, the Hiroshima bomb and the Nagasaki bomb. These are enormous devices, very heavy devices. How big were they? Uh, it could easily fit this room, mm. you know? Big devices, uh, but these were 
small explosions they would today be be classified as tactical nuclear weapons uh, kilotons a few kilotons 10 20 kilotons uh, of output of tnt equivalent that's the the way we measure nuclear output the output of a nuclear weapon mm. the equivalent amount of kilotons of tnt that you can explode so um, eventually what happened is that more bigger and bigger more powerful nuclear weapons were created but they were miniaturized so you could put them on top of a rocket or a missile that could be delivered anywhere in the world if in, initially you had inter, small short range ballistic missiles then intermediate range ballistic, ballistic missiles and eventually you had inter, intercontinental range ballistic missiles so this technology also developed so there was a massive arms race going on and the world world soon came to the brink of nuclear disaster one wrong one mistake one wrong press of the button and both sides are at war nuclear war mm. so that's the what the world was on was at the brink of for a very long time there were a couple of very close calls so these things happened you know um the way i look at it this is the 1960s and 70s roughly little bit of the 50s now at that time mankind had the playbook of world war 2 and i think memories of uh nazi germany were very fresh in people's heads and nazi germany had focused on technology science advancements probably classified scientific experiments that aren't released to the public even today that's the urban legends you know about einstein's philadelphia experiment etc etc so the way i look at it they were trying to show each other that listen i am ahead of you in this scientific race and if i am ahead in science i probably have stronger weapons than you that's why i can win the war so don't go to war then it became this constant sort of half ego battle half battle of science to keep up with the other person which for mankind one it created a dangerous scenario but two it also helped progress science heavily would you agree being a scientist yes it did uh, progress the limits of technology significantly tremendously but they, it also brought the world on the brink of disaster which it stayed at for a very long time even now we have a massive amount of nuclear weapons it's called mutually assured destruction once you have so many nuclear weapons and missiles on each side it's mutually assured destruction nobody wants to use them ever because if one is launched there's going to be a volley of missiles coming from the other side then you're going to launch 10 more then 10 more then very soon it's going to be destruction complete let's break away from geopolitics for a second let's talk to the scientist in you mm -hmm. if we actually have nuclear war can you paint a picture of what will happen in the case of a nuclear war somebody is going to launch a missile that's how it begins mm. whether it's from a submarine whether it's from a ground based silo whether it's from the air somebody is going to launch a missile that missile is going to be detected by the by the place by the country where it's going to come where it's going to land so in retaliation that country will be left with no choice if there's a nuclear missile coming its way or if it explodes you have to pay back in the same coin so you're going to launch one more then the other side will launch one more there there could be multiple launches and they'll bomb each other's cities yes and then once you have multiple launches there it's all it's all all going to happen it's it's like an unstoppable chain reaction like what happened in world war 1 once the first declaration of war happened it was a instantaneous chain reaction everybody was at war similarly this could happen right now also if somebody makes the mistake of launching a nuclear weapon my goodness the whole pack of cards could crumble very rapidly mm. thanks for watching make sure you check out the entire episode and also check out this playlist that we've curated just for you